Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is the fifth video in my series of Microsoft Agent Framework. And in this video, we will see how can we test our tools which we have already associated with the AI agent. Because whenever we are associating a tool, definitely we cannot direct go ahead and execute our agent because there may be something wrong with the tool invocation or how the agent is behaving. And this situation arises when you have, let's say, 10, 12 or 15 or lot many tools. In that case, we definitely want to go through some of the use cases and make sure that this agent is going to invoke the correct tool. So this video is all about how can you see or validate whether the agent is invoking the correct tool. And this is done using one of the most useful feature of Microsoft Agent Framework and that is declarative tooling. So let's quickly see what it is, why should we use it and how can we use it using one of the sample programs which I will show you uh, towards the end of this video. So let's first understand what is this declarative tool setup. So whenever I'm saying declarative tool setup, it means that agent knows what a tool does but it will not go ahead and execute it. It means it will figure out, okay, this is the tool which I'm going to execute, but it will not go ahead and execute whatever the function body you have written in the real implementation. So this is only to verify whether this is the tool which I need to invoke or not. Now, these are the four different scenarios you can see where this feature is like very useful and you can relate it to your agentic implementation. The first one is the safe simulation. So the reason why it is safe simulation is because there is no side effect and this is the perfect setup for testing our agentic code. Then we have the human in loop, which me it means that agents can suggest actions. It can wait for the approval. It can wait for the human input before proceeding further. It also promotes modular planning. So let's say you have lot many agents or you are uh, building an application with multi-agent scenario. In that case, you may need to uh, send one agent's output to next agent or maybe you are running multiple agents in parallel. So in that case or that sort of uh, tools chaining can be verified without actually executing it. And the fourth one is the improved reasoning. So let's say you want the output from an agent in a very specific format you have some classes defined and you want your output to be in that format rather than the whole long story so in that case this particular setup is going to work very well for your scenario so let's talk about how can we do this so the very first set uh, thing in this setup is you need to define like what would be your expected output so again the first step is completely optional if you want you can just go with the default output whatever the agent is spitting but in case if you have specific classes in mind if you have specific json format in mind then you can definitely define it and i will show you using uh, the pydentic uh, library of the python then next thing is the declaration so whatever the tool you uh, tools you want to test make sure that you are using ai function to invoke those tools then the third one is create agent and associate that particular tool or the list of tools which you want to test it out and then run the queries and observe the reasoning whether it is invoking the correct tool or not let's talk a little bit about the behavior so what the agent does or what actually it is doing so what it does is based on the user's intent user's query it will go ahead and pass the user's query or figure out the intent then it will figure out what all tools are matching with this intent which agent has already figured it out then it will try to plan the structured input like how do you want to proceed further in that case and the fourth one here is it explains the intended action but it actually never executes it just simulates the scenario what we are trying to test and let's see where this particular feature is useful so these are the key scenarios which you can think so whenever you're planning uh, or creating an agent ai agent for a devops planning definitely you don't want to go ahead and uh, create or update your pipeline in real life right before that we definitely want to test it out whether this agent is going to create the correct way or it is going to create the correct branch it is going to execute the correct job or not so all these things you need to test it out 
then the procure, procurement agent, uh, assistance. We do have a multi-agent orchestration scenarios. We can also use this particular feature whenever we are looking for academic feedback reviewers and the approval based workflow. So these are the five scenarios which I think are very much prominent when we are building with the agentic when we are building agentic application. So let's see what it is saying. So it is saying think first and execute later. It means that first try out whether is this the expected outcome or not. And if you feel that this agent is doing pretty good, then go ahead and invoke your actual function. And this you can do it using Microsoft Agent Framework. And let's take a quick look at the scenario which we are going to build today. So I will be having a two declarative tools. One will go ahead and update the Jira tickets and another one uh, will go ahead and post messages in the team. So let's see how we can execute these two different, uh, th this workflow using these two different tools wherein we will ag not exactly or not actually executing the tools, but we will just figure it out that whether agent is invoking the correct tool or not. So in order to get started, you can use Azure OpenAI, you can use OpenAI, but in this case, I'm just using the Olama one, the free open source one, rather than using any paid version. So these are the three packages which I have installed. So make sure that you are having these on your machine. So if you don't want to use the configuration and if you're planning to hard code anything, then you can just get rid of this third one. But definitely you will need first and the second agentic framework and the pydentic if you are looking for the structured output. But if you are simply looking to forward to play with the agent, then you just need the very first one which is agent framework. Now, these are the few things which I have imported. And again, the line number three is very specific to what kind of LLM you are planning to use. In my case, I'm going with the open source one. So the same open AI chat client works for me. Now, these are the two different classes I have created. One is for a Teams message and the another one is for the Jira update. And the reason why I'm creating these two classes are like, remember I told you that if you want, you can structure your output from the agent or what output do you want to pass it to your next agent or the output to console. So in that case, you can just draft your format. So I, whenever I'm talking about the Jira, I just want these two things as an output. I don't want the whole story, what the ticket is, or what is the, what are the three, four statements, which agent is spitting. I'm interested only in these two parameters, ticket ID and the status. Then similarly for teams, I want to know which team I need to send a message on which channel and what is the message. So these are the three things which I'm actually interested. And the reason why I'm doing like this is because in future, there may be a scenario where I need to pass on this information to some other agent or some other console. In that case, I don't want to pass it by my own, rather Pydentic, Pydentic is good enough to take care of it. Okay, so these are the two structures I have defined. And like I said, it's completely optional. If you don't want to do it, just get rid of this and you need not to define anything like this. Then, like I said, we need to use the AI function as a decorator. So in this case, what you can do is you can go ahead with the AI function, which is going, this is a class and it is going to take these many parameters. So like I said, human in loop feature that also you can use it using this approval mode, but I'm not going with that particular scenario. What I'm doing here is I'm creating an AI function, which is post teams. It is going to, this is my function name. This is a simple description which describes this particular function and this is the input format. Then we have a similar thing for the Jira and this is my function name. This is the description of this function like simulate updating a Jira ticket and this is the format. Now let's go ahead and try this out. So inside main I'm first loading the configuration uh, because I'm reading this Olama endpoint and the model name. So if you want to know the model name, it's Llama for me. I think Llama 3.2. Okay, so here I'm constructing my client using Olama details. Then using the same detail, I'm going ahead with the agent creation. So if you will look at this one, you are a dry run agent. You plan actions, but never execute them. 
and the reason why it is not executing it because we are using AI function here. So whenever you are using AI function, you are actually telling to the system that this function is not having any body. It's just like the empty or the mocked function. So, and next I'm saying, okay, this is my query. Update Jira ticket ABC123 to in progress. And then I'm simply running it as agent.run. Now let me quickly run this and show you how it works. And you know, this kind of feature is very useful when you want to do unit testing, because whenever we are talking about unit testing, it's all about mocking the actual behavior. So what happened? Let's see. So it is executing here. It is trying to create an agent. And this is the user query. Update Jira ticket ABC1232 in progress. And these are the uh, output or you can see the result from the agent. But the most important thing which we are interested in, like I said, we are interested only in these two parameters. Right? So what it is, so you can look at the contents here. And here you can see the function name. So it called the function update Jira ticket with the argument status is in progress and the ticket ID is ABC123. So you can see that we didn't receive the whole bunch of information, but we received the parsed information out of that particular function call. And we can also confirm that this is the correct function call because our query was update Jira ticket ABC to in progress. It has nothing to do with Teams. So that's why I didn't invoke the Teams function. Now let me show you another user's query wherein we will try to invoke Teams function. So let's quickly go through this. Send notification to CSC team on work status channel that zero ticket ABC123 is in progress. So I'm going to execute this and we'll see what the output is. So when we are talking about the teams, these are the expected arguments. Okay, so here you can see, so this was the run for this particular query, chat message, role assistant, but let's quickly take a look at this directly. So here you can see the function that was called was post teams message. And the arguments which it received is the channel name, which is work status. Message is Jira's, Jira ticket ABC is in progress something is missing here let me quickly run it and show you and the team name is perfect which is CSE so if I will run but the overall the idea of this execution is we are able to invoke the correct function here or the correct tool Seems it is giving the same way. Let me try to change my query and see how it does. It is going ahead with that. And this time you can see that we got the correct output. Channel name is work status, Jira ticket ABC is in progress, and the team name is CSE. So this is how it was able to parse this particular user's query. Now, let me show you one thing. So send notification to CSE team. Let's try this one because in this case or in this query, I'm not passing the channel information. So let's see how it gives us that. So here you can see this time there was no channel. It's empty because it was not able to pass the channel name from the query. So that's how we can relate that. It is very easy to try out how your tools are invoked by the agent. And it is very much recommended when you are 
working on the applications where which are very critical or which are like sensitive applications in that case it is always good to go ahead and test out your function whether the correct function or the tool is invoked or not so that's all i have for today maybe i will come up with another interesting topic in my next video till then keep watching